Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. It's no secret that China's economy has taken a hit since COVID. What the government doesn't want you to know is the number of young people who can't find a job. Midway through the year, the youth unemployment rate hit a record high. But now, Beijing is refusing to even publish the figures anymore. Today, economist Nancy Chen explains why 16 to 24-year-olds in China are becoming increasingly frustrated and what that means for the nation's stability. Nancy, the Chinese economy, it's going through a really tough period. It's tanking right now. One in five young people can't find a job. The property market is teetering on the edge. And unlike the rest of the world, China has deflation, which is terrible for growth. And not only that, the country is facing a huge problem with youth unemployment. Just tell me about that. The Chinese economy is facing an inevitable growth slowdown. Mm -hmm. It's still growing at 3 to 5% per year. That said, 3 to 5% is a big decline from the recent historical rates of 10% per year. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that there are fewer jobs. And what we're seeing is that there are fewer jobs in particular for the youth. What do the figures look like? I understand the government has stopped publishing them, but what do we know? The last time we saw reported youth unemployment figures, they were at a historical high, just a bit over 20% in China. That's just the latest figures that we have. It's not unusual for the Chinese government to stop publishing statistics when something is going wrong or they're not sure what's going on. They similarly temporarily stopped publishing GDP statistics during COVID, the first few quarters of COVID. So we don't know exactly the figure anymore because the government's not publishing it, but it is actually a very, we think, high level of youth unemployment in China right now. What's going on? Why is the job market shrinking so much? The Chinese job market is shrinking for several reasons and that are quite complicated, unfortunately. Mm. You know, one is just there was no way that China could sustain 10% per year growth forever. What we didn't know was when exactly it would slow down and what jobs would it show up in. And what we're seeing is that it's showing up in the jobs that college graduates really want, the high paying, high skilled jobs. It's hard to be very excited or happy if you're a new graduate right now in China. Uh, I mean, first of all, we need to clarify that when we talk about youth unemployment in China, we're talking explicitly about urban youth unemployment. These are college graduates mostly because all universities are in urban areas in China. China is one of the most competitive academic schooling systems in the world. And now they've graduated and those jobs just aren't there. Mm. So one person is my cousin who finished law school in China and then got a graduate degree overseas. And when she returned this year, she just wasn't able to find a job. For every job she interviewed for, there were 40 to 100 applicants, all equally qualified or more qualified. And the wages that were being offered were a third to half of what they were five years ago. And how, Nancy, does that compare for men and women or is it the same? Youth unemployment is hitting everyone very hard right now. That said, the ability of young women to get a job, it's much harder for them than for young men. The reason that it's harder for young women is that employers are really concerned that they're going to be hired and then have children and take a lot of time off. China has a declining fertility rate, so the government has implemented a lot of policies to promote fertility. China's government has announced it's scrapping a policy limiting couples to two children and will now allow them to have three. The one-child policy was ended in 2015. Which is a sharp change from its historical policies. But what that means for employers is that they think, if I hire a young woman today, she's probably going to have one to three kids because now all Chinese couples are allowed to have three kids. And the employer is not allowed to fire them. They have to preserve the jobs. And this means a lot of money for the employer. 
If I hire a young man, cultural norms are such that Chinese employers think however many kids he has, he's going to keep on working. His wife will stop working and take care of the kids. So, if it was a competitive labor market, they would be forced to hire young women and young men. But because it's a buyer's market, they just prefer young men. So, Nancy, let's talk about another problem for China because it's not just that there aren't jobs for Chinese graduates. Some seem to be rebelling against the workplace culture. Tell us more about what's expected in the Chinese workplace and how some young people feel about that. The Chinese work culture is very intense. On average, Chinese urban workers are expected to work nine nine six. What that means is nine a.m. to nine p.m. six days a week. Wow. So while the 996 hours were actually made illegal a few years ago because it was seen as so punitive and harmful, it's still what's going on in reality because it's such a competitive labor market. Right, and some young people in China seem so frustrated by that that they're checking out of work. China has words for this, doesn't it? What are they? Recently, a lot of Chinese youths are so dispirited by the lack of jobs that they are prepared for and that they thought they were going to get, that they're quote unquote lying flat. And what it really means is just that they're giving up, so to speak. Some people say I'm practicing the lying flat philosophy. Maybe they need labels to understand how I can live with no ambition. I'm not being rebellious on purpose. I just want to be comfortable and free of anxiety. The economics behind lying flat is pretty complicated, as is everything else that's going on in China right now. You can look at lying flat in two ways. On the one hand, there are lots of jobs in China. They're just not high-paying jobs that college graduates want. So the fact that the college graduates are not taking those jobs and instead just giving up and remaining unemployed means that they have families who are wealthy enough to support them while they don't work. Chinese families today are richer than they have ever been historically. So this is actually a sign of wealth. On the other hand, they're not working. Young people are almost never happy if they just have to stay at home, disappointed, not doing anything. So this is a real social problem and a source of big concern for China. And Nancy, for some young Chinese, it goes further, doesn't it? Some of these kids are becoming what's being dubbed full-time children. How does that work? I've actually spoken to several people that are doing it right now. So some youth are just saying, "Well, you know, if I can't get a job in an urban area that pays enough, let me just go home and help my parents and my family, where I can, you know, do something meaningful." Other cases are just of young people who just they don't have money, they can't find jobs, they don't know what else to do, so they're just going home and they're sitting at home playing video games, feeling very depressed and frustrated. I would say that that's a source of concern.、Mm, so tell me, Nancy, how widespread is this? Is it really common now in China to see this happen? The phenomenon of lying flat. Becoming a full-time child, and just the overall sense of desperation and sadness is certainly very salient and something that's widely discussed amongst the youth. There are people online telling me you should feel sorry for letting your parents down and wasting your country's resources. You get a master's degree with their support, but end up running a shop. It's like I should say sorry to the whole country. Nancy, let's have a look then at how the Chinese government is responding to all of this because it must be concerned by it. What is it doing? The Chinese government is doing a range of things to address the situation. One thing is about messaging; is trying to convince the young people that instead of being unemployed, they should just take the lower wage jobs. Some of them are in rural areas or smaller towns or in factories, but they should just take them, because actually China is having a hard time filling those jobs. There are a lot of vacant jobs that can't be filled in factories. 
But this isn't、uh, very satisfying to a lot of the youth and their parents because they don't want to take those jobs. They've worked so hard in order to get better jobs and to stay in cities where the amenities are so much better than small towns or rural areas. So it's just going to take a lot to convince the urban youth to be happy with lower-paying jobs. Hmm. So they're ignoring the government and lying flat instead. There's kind of a social contract in China, isn't there, where people work hard, they don't dissent, and in return, generations are pulled out of poverty. But it seems like that social contract is really splintering. The Chinese government's not able to convince people to keep up their end of the bargain. In China, historically, there was this concept called the Iron Bowl, which means that no matter what happens, you can have a job. The government will provide you with a job. The Iron Bowl disappeared while large parts of the economy was privatized. That said, because economic growth was so high, even in the private economy, most people were able to get jobs, and by and large, people were getting richer and richer every generation. What's troubling now? It's not that there's any unemployment because we've seen unemployment in China before. During this transition from a state-run economy to a privatized economy, we often saw very high unemployment rates, as high as forty percent in some regions. What's really interesting about what's happening now is that the people who are unemployed are the people who thought they would always be guaranteed a job, the people that are the most educated from the best schools in China. So these kids. Who've worked really hard are the best of the best, the creme de la creme. They have always expected that whatever happens to the Chinese economy, they will always find a job,、mm-hmm. a high-paying job in the city, and that's what we're not seeing happen right now. And Nancy, if the government can't solve this, if it can't get people to stand up and go into the workforce, what comes next? What happens? So a lot of countries have very high youth unemployment rates. You know, countries in the OECD like Spain have unemployment rates of twenty-seven percent. Even in Sweden, it's over twenty percent. So now, Spain and Sweden are not falling apart, but all of these countries are very concerned about social and political instability that could result from just having many young people who aren't employed in any productive engagement. It's really hard to know how things will play out in China. One way to look at it is the reason that the youth can afford unemployment is because their parents are wealthier than any parents of previous generations and can afford to support them. So that's the positive view. The negative view is that they've worked a lot, they've put in a lot, they expected something, and that isn't there, and they're going to be unhappy. And I think it's anyone's guess which way it'll go. Nancy Chen is a Chinese American economist at Northwestern University in Illinois, in the United States. The Chinese government has not published youth unemployment data since July. This episode was produced by Nell Whitehead, Lara Corrigan, Bridget Fitzgerald, Sam Dunn, and Anna John, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening. ABC Listen podcasts, radio, news, music, and more. 